Hello guys, and welcome back to another video, and this is Eric Moss Speaks Out. I forget what episode it is on, since it's been a while since I've done this, but I'm back doing this. I don't know how consistently I'll do this, but I, I felt like talking to you guys on a... Just talking about movies and stuff. So, this week, uh, a lot of trailers came out, like Warcraft, Mag Magnificent Seven. Also, news concerning, like, Rock being in Jumanji, Daddy's Home 2 being confirmed in development. Um, possibly no Terminator sequels. I'll be talking about a whole bunch of stuff concerning movies. I'll start off with movie trailers. I'm not going to be talking about any, like, DVDs coming out or any movies coming out this week. Because this is on Saturday, so I find there's no point to be talking about that. But anyway, uh, and I won't be talking about box office either, because box office numbers have not came out for the weekend yet. I mean, there's estimates, but I don't feel like talking about estimates, because stuff could change. It could come in lower, it could come in higher, stuff like that. But anyway, movie trailers, I have six. I'll be talking about Warcraft, Magnificent Seven, Independence Day Resurgence, Jason Bourne, The Girl on the Train, and The Founder. I'll be starting off with Warcraft. I watched this trailer. I, I've i been really looking forward to Warcraft. Um, I don't know, I have never played the game, so I don't know much about the source material stuff. But I find it like a mixture between Avatar and... Uh, Lord of the Rings. The action seems a lot like the Lord of the Rings type action. The visuals look like Avatar, Jungle Book level type visuals. And this trailer is mainly action. I really enjoyed it. We get kind of hints to, towards the story. Not really a whole bunch to bring you in. Like, I really want to see that story. I think they're more leaning in like, you want to see these effects. You want to see this action. Because you know in this type of movie, the story won't be what brings people in. If you're not familiar with the source material, you need to bring newcomers in. You need to highlight the action and the visuals. And I think they did that really good. The music choice wasn't really the best. I'm like, what are they playing in the background? But I thought it was a pretty good trailer for what it was. Maybe we'll get like one more, like two weeks out, just to get some more story. Hopefully, they don't show a lot of stuff. And then if they do do another trailer, hopefully, they don't do. Uh, show a lot of story because I don't like that when they do in trailers and I think they already shown it in one trailer I'm going to be coming up to but anyway I enjoyed the Warcraft trailer next trailer I'm going to be talking about is Magnificent 7 this one stars Chris Pratt, Denzel Washington, Ethan Hawke, Vincent D'Onofrio among other people directed by Anton Fuqua it comes out this September this is was this was in my top 10 most anticipated of the year because I love the cast I love the director I don't really love the director but some stuff I like from him, some stuff I don't, but uh, I really like the Equalizer. Um, but yeah, so I was really looking forward to this film because, because mainly Chris Pratt, but I like the cast as I said before, and um, I I really want a good uh, western movie. I I'm like the only one who really enjoyed The Lone Ranger. I know a lot of people really hated that movie. I didn't. Um, I thought it was really nice and. I yeah, I called it one of the best movies of 2013. Now, I'll probably get a whole bunch of backlash for that. I already do on Instagram. But yeah, but I really like that movie. So, there's been a while since we have an actual good Western film besides The Lone Ranger. Cowboys and the Aliens could have been that, but it wasn't really that good. And this movie looks really great. Um, It looks like they're not going like in like a totally dark route, but they're still having the dark elements, serious elements in it. Some stuff, the like Chris Pratt probably be the comedic relief, light heart, ca like levity character, the person that comes in uh, when stuff is even really serious, he can spruce up the moment, and I really like that. Uh, I just really like the action in the movie. They don't give us a whole lot of story. They give us some in the very beginning, but the next, like the first 50 seconds we get story, but the next minute it's like all action. So, hopefully by the next trailer, probably when Ghostbusters come out, hopefully we get some more story. Uh, next trailer we got was Independence Day Resurgence. This comes out two months from now. Um, it looks like an 80s action film. It, it looks like that. It I just watched the trailer before um, doing this, so uh, I remember a lot of stuff from it. Uh, Jeff Goldblum looks like he's being Jeff Goldblum. He has this whole... Uh, uh, he got a bunch of lines like... 
Oh, they love the landmarks with um with the aliens and stuff. They're like whatever comes up comes down, stuff like that. And he looks like being classic Gold Bloom. Uh, the visuals look kind of good, and then kind of look kind of crap at some moments. Um, the action doesn't look bad. It actually looks pretty interesting. I can't. The action probably be the one thing that saves the movie. Probably not the really the story. The story actually looks like it's going in an interesting route, saying like the humans built stuff because of the aliens' technology after they defeat them. I actually really like that like arc they're doing. That's I, it's not really a subplot. Well, I don't know. It's not really the major plot, but it's a subplot that I actually want to see more of in this movie. But yeah, um, Independent Day Resurgence, I probably end up watching it. Probably not in theaters because it doesn't look the best. Um, I'll probably end up watching it. Unless it gets rave reviews, then I'll go, then I'll try to go see it in the theater. But I probably just end up watching this when it comes on, um, Digital HD. No. Uh, next show I'm going to be talking about is Jason Bourne. Now, I know a lot of people are really looking forward to this movie. I've never seen any of the Bourne films. Um, I wanted to see the Bourne Legacy when it came out, but I did not. I still have not seen that. That's how... I was like, ooh, it came right over my head when it came out. Um, I heard the Bourne Legacy wasn't that great, though, compared to the other couple. But I've never seen any of the Matt Damon ones. I know the central character of Jason Bourne, where he's like... He has amnesia, I think. Let me go just go research that right now. But yeah, uh, the film looks good if you a, are a fan of the first couple movies or the books of him. And yeah, um, it Alicia Vikander's in it, so that's actually pretty nice. Uh, I like how she's getting a more roles and stuff yeah uh Alex ba I think Alec Baldwin's also in it right is Alec Baldwin also in it oh Tommy Lee Jones Tommy Lee Jones is another guy in Jason Bourne but um the action looks pretty neat uh definitely the Las Vegas scene with the cars um the Matt Damon thing with the desert where he punches the guy out I actually want to see that that actually looks pretty nice but yeah, I'm not gonna. I probably won't end up seeing this in theaters just because I've not seen the other three at least. So it's like if I see the other three and I really like them, I'll probably and this gets good reviews. I'll probably end up going seeing it. Go see it unless I get advanced screening tickets. Then I'll probably go see it. I'll probably make an effort to watch the first three. But yeah, but um, I'm not really gonna make my way to it automatically um but yeah that's me i know a lot of people are really looking forward to it next trailer is the girl on the train this one stars emily blunt luke evans i think i'm pretty sure luke evans i'm going on the full cast right now um emily blunt's the main star though it's kind of has a gone girl vibe um yeah, it's uh, Emily Blunt, Rebecca Ferguson, Luke Evans, Justin Thero, Edgar Ramirez, Allison Janney, Louis, Lisa Kudrow, Haley Bennett. Um, is this one based on a book? Yeah, this one's based on a book that was written last year. Wow. Um, yeah, but it looks to be kind of like Gone Girl vibe um, from the trailer. But I'm, I love how they played Kanye West in it. I'm. I love that song they played from uh, Kanye West in the background. I like how it was like slowed down and stuff. And I really enjoyed the regular version of the song. But yeah. Um, but I felt like they showed a lot of the movie in the trailer with the major plot points. Like, like a lot of people say, "Oh, you can't." There's a whole bunch. Like Batman v Superman, they only showed like 20 minutes of footage. There's still two more hours. But it, what you show in that 20 minutes of footage. And this is one of those things with the girl in the train trailer. Even though the movie is probably like two hours, they showed a lot of the major plot points in the in the trailer. So that's my only thing right now. But you know who knows? Um, but originally Jared Leto and Chris Evans were supposed to be in the film, so that was actually I actually would really want to see that. But yeah, but uh, Emily Blunt, I I really want her as Captain Marvel. Uh. 
it looks I'll probably end up watching this because I really wanted to see Gone Girl and it looks like it has that vibe to it. And uh Tate Taylor directs this one. What has he done? He's done the help get on up and the girl on the train. So he actually has a few good films under his belt. I've never seen Get On Up or The Help, but uh, I heard those movies were really good. Um, Chadwick Boseman was in, uh, he got rave reviews in Get On Up. But um, The Girl on Train looks interesting. It has that, I like these crime, th it's not really a crime thriller, I would really call it, but it only has that thriller drama aspect. But I uh, I like those type of films. Uh, I don't like how they move so slow, but I do like when you get a good payoff. I think the payoff is the major thing of this movie. It's better. It's gotta have a good payoff. Uh, next trailer I'm gonna be talking about. The last trailer I'm gonna be talking about is the founder. Is the documentary, f not documentary, uh, biopic film of Ray Kroc played by Michael Keaton and how he takes over McDonald's. And if you know me, I really like McDonald's. I can go eat there every day. Uh, if someone paid me, like, oh, you're not going to get your body, you're not going to gain any weight, and you're not going to gain any health problems, I would eat McDonald's every day. But uh, I don't. But I do really enjoy McDonald's. But uh, this one seems a lot of, this one seems really interesting. I really hope this one gets money, it gets the box office, because it doesn't, coming out August 5th, it comes on the same day as Suicide Squad. I don't know if it's coming out in wide release. I don't know if they're doing the whole limited release stuff. And then slowly sprinkling in. And then eventually having a wide release movie. But uh, wide release. Um, I have expan expansion. But uh, the trailer was really good. I, I'm scared that they showed a lot in the trailer as well. I felt like they showed a lot in the trailer. But Michael Keaton's in it. Nick Offerman's in it. A whole bunch of talented actors are in this movie. I really want to see it. Um, yeah, so I really want to see it. I'm, I'm think I'm forgetting things I'm gonna say. Uh, Mug Keaton, he actually looks better in this movie than what I saw him in Birdman. I actually, I really believe that statement. He looks better in this film than he did in Birdman. I believe he should have won in Bird. I believe he should have won the Oscar for Birdman instead of Ed Redman in Theory of Everything. But he looks better in this film. But my main thing is that probably he won't win the Oscar. It comes out it comes out a bit too early. It comes out like five months early. You got other um, uh, competitors with uh, the Birth of a Nation. Uh, um, I think that's uh, Nate Parker. Uh, that's it's directed by Nate Parker and stars Nate Parker. Yeah, Nate Parker seems like he could be a guy going up for that Oscar as well. Uh, but the founder looks really good. I. I can tell you guys, go check out the trailer at least. Now, I'll be talking about the movie news section. Um, we have a couple of movie news. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 headlines I'm going to be talking about. There's a couple others where I could have talked about really with casting news and J.J. Uh, Abrams and Daisy Ridley's new movie coming out. I, did, that, I really have no... Excuse me, guys. I really had no really thoughts on that type of stuff. So, yeah, I have a few thoughts about this stuff. My first movie is going to be talking about Robert Downey Jr. is confirmed to appear in Spider-Man Homecoming. But Michael Keaton has dropped out of talks. He was originally in talks for a villain role, rumoredly, possibly the Vulture. But they also did cast two more teenagers for the film. Um, I'm just getting their names right now. Tony Rowall, the kid from, um, the kid from, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel is also going to be in it. I forget his name. I'm getting on it right now. Um, Tony Ro Tony Ravallery. That's his name. I don't. Sorry, if I messed that up, I'm really sorry. But yeah, he's going to be in it. And then, uh, um, dude, this is in Spanish right now. Spider-Man in film. Okay, there we go. Uh, where is this? Spider-Man Homecoming. 
Laura Harrier is in it as well. Um, don't know any of them. That that's the major. Um, that's the major. Um, casting news for this film. Tony Revolvero um, is going to be an enemy at high school who isn't a super villain. I mean, I'm assuming going to be like a Flash Thompson type person, the bully. And then Laura Harry is going to play a significant role like Zendaya was cast for. I don't know what her significant role will be. Who knows? But Michael Keaton was rumored to play a villain. Uh, a lot of people were saying Vulture. He dropped out, which I'm really mad about. Michael Keaton... He's my homeboy, <laughs> um, but yeah, I they lost a lot of talent there. It would have been really nice. And then Robert Downey Jr. confirmed to re confirmed to reprise his role, which we all knew was going to happen um, with him. Uh, we already had rumors of that him or Chris Evans was was going to appear in this film, but it's confirmed he Robert Downey Jr. is that person. I don't know what the fate is doing with Captain America: Civil War. Captain America in Captain America Civil War because I have not seen that movie. I have not seen Captain America Civil War. So this is nothing about spoilers, guys. I've not seen the movie yet. Um, some people have seen the movie, which I'm really mad about, but I have not seen the movie yet. Um, I don't know when I'm going to see it. I have tickets for opening weekend, but yeah. Uh, Robert and Gene confirmed. Looks to be a nice entry in this. Um, I mean... I mean, that's all I have to say. I mean, Robert Downey Jr. is in it. Uh, we all knew that was going to happen, though. So, yeah. Uh, next bit of news is Marvel's Inhumans is removed from release date. Now, this is actually really interesting. Kevin Feige, uh, I think, uh, said like a week ago saying like, oh, we don't really have a lot of stuff uh, going on with Inhumans right now. It could get pushed back. And because of Indiana Jones, this is his official... Um, statement. Uh, since we made our initial Phase 3 announcement, we added Spider-Man, which was a big joyous coop for us. We added Ant-Man and the Wasp, which was a which was a big fun continuation of that story for us. Walt Disney Company has announced an Indiana Jones film for right around that same time, so I think it will shuffle off the current date that it's on right now. How far down it shuffles, I'm not sure yet. Uh, this will come out July 2nd, 2018. Probably uh, sometime in November now. Um, cause that's how, that was the farthest Marvel has announced their plans was for that July date. And I think they're going to do something in November. I'm going to get on 2019 and film, seeing what it could face if it did fare in that uh, late 2019. All it has to face is a DC uh, film that has yet to be announced. Um, nothing has been announced for a December date. So I can definitely see it sliding in there. But, yeah, Inhumans removed from schedule. I know a lot of people, not really a lot of people, but some people have been looking forward to this film. I have not really, been, this is my least most anticipated part of Phase 3. Phase 3, at least. Because we don't know much about information. We don't, we don't have a director, we don't have casting, we don't have a producer. I think we have a screenwriter, but that's it, really it. So, yeah. The Rock has been officially confirmed for the Jumanji reboot. Kevin Hart has not, but he's been rumored. I hate this news. Jumanji was probably one of my favorite Robin Williams, if not the my favorite of his filmography. So there's really no point because of remaking it. Because even though, oh yeah, we can do some cool stuff visually, you can't redo it. I mean, you Robin Williams put a lot of um, energy into that role where, yeah, The Rock puts a lot of energy in his role, but in his roles he does. But I don't think you can get up to that. Uh, oh my, um, um, he, The Rock can't get up to that energy of Robin Williams, and Kevin Hart. I don't like this duo, even though they're. I've not seen Central Intelligence yet, so maybe they do have some good chemistry. I don't really find Kevin Hart to be that funny. Uh, sometimes he, he actually, sometimes some of the things he says it actually is funny. Um, he was mainly the only good thing about Ride Along, the first one at least. Uh, so some of the stuff he says is kind of funny here and there, but isn't like I'm balls out laughing type deal, like some people are. So yeah. Um, 
I do not like this news. I don't know about it. I who's I think the person who did sex tape is directing Jake Kasdan. Yep, he did sex tape. I don't know about this movie. I don't know about this movie, guys. This is one of my this is probably be one of my most feared movies of next year. But anyways, uh, Daddy's Home 2 is confirmed to be in development. Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg is set to return. I have not seen the first movie. I have not. But the first movie did look funny in the promotional material. It did. I watched a few minutes of it because I watched it on uh, Digital HD. I have yet to finish it. I watched like the first 30 minutes. Um, it was funny. I... There was some stuff. Um, I did like the adult jokes in it. Because uh, my main thing is uh, for movies, for children movies at least, for family movies, you have to have adult jokes in it to really get people, to really get good reviews. And I really felt like in the first 30 minutes, it, yeah, it really did that. And um, it, I don't know about a sequel though. This movie looks like a one and done type film. There's certain movies that are one and done. You can't really expand apart upon the story, which... A lot of Hollywood doesn't really understand that. As long as it, oh, if this movie makes a bunch of money, yeah, we'll make a sequel. You don't really get a lot of movies like, oh, it made a lot of money, but it's it, it didn't make a lot of money, but it sits still for a bunch of sequels. We well, we're gonna make one, and then you don't really see a lot of that. And like Dread, I think that's one of the main things. Dread has not gotten a sequel yet because a lot of people really like Dread, but it didn't make a lot of money. I don't think a lot of people were clamoring for Daddy's Home 2. It seems like a one-and-done film. How about you do something else with Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg? How about you make a other guy's sequel? Or something like that. It's like, the other guy's got great reviews. And got did well financially. Oh, no, it didn't do that well financially. $170 million on $100 million budget. But... I don't know about this. I don't know. I don't know. I there's a lot of stuff that I don't really care for. Daddy's Home Two seems like a one that like if it if it's funny, if it's better than the first one, then yeah, I'll gladly admit it. But it seems like it seems super unnecessary. How about you do? How about you get Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg to do something else together, something original, new, and refreshing. The next thing I'm going to be talking about is Sherlock Holmes 3 is confirmed with Robert Downey Jr. A possible shooting. Not possible. They might actually start shooting this film this year. Which, um, this film has been in development for a while now. The last one came out in 2011. The first one came out in 2009. Um, uh, let me get on this. Um, he com even confirmed that the film will, would begin shooting later this year. So, I think Jude Law is also coming back. Um, I've not seen the first two. I really want to check out the first one. I have yet to check that out. I think that one got pretty good reviews. Uh, the, sec the second one did not get that great one. Uh, it, didn't, it made $186.8 million in North America. That's actually quite surprising. What? I really you made that much money in North America? I'm on Wikipedia right now. I didn't did not expect that. Let me get on Wikipedia right. Let me get on Box Office Mojo. But yeah, um, for me personally, I'd rather see Robert Downey Jr. take on original content. You know, maybe if he does this, maybe they'll probably end it off. Um, the Sherlock Holmes trilogy, but. I'm not really, I'm not seeing the first two, so I can't really say anything. 186 million, yeah, it may, yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, it's, I, it makes a lot of money, though. It makes over 500 million worldwide. So, I think that's one of the real re reasons why Warner Brothers, Warner Brothers is suffering right now with a lot of films last year bombed for them. Let me get on the bombs they had. That was, one of them was uh, Pan. Um... Uh, we are your friends. Didn't cost a lot of money, so I wouldn't really call it a bomb. But yeah, let me get on it right now. 2016 film, no, 2015 films. They had 
Uh, run all night. Didn't do that well. Jupiter Ascending was a major bomb for them. Hot Pursuit, how much did that movie cost? I, I mean, that one, eh, I don't know. It wasn't too bad of a loss. Uh, Entourage. Uh, no, I think they may have gotten one. May have gotten their money back. The Man from Uncle didn't do that well. Black Mass didn't do as well as they intended it to be. Pan, as I say, bombed in the Heart of Sea, bombed. Point Break bombed. Um, Batman v Superman isn't doing too well, so they need they need a lot of stuff. Well, it did well in in a lot of eyes, but it didn't do well in the, with all the expectations it had. So yeah, they need a lot of stuff going for them, and I guess they assume that Sherlock Holmes three is a way to go for this movie, and it actually could, it actually could. Maybe we'll get something really good. I've not seen the first three, so yeah. Next movie I'm going to talk about, Emilia Clarke says no to Terminator sequels. What does this mean for Terminator Genesis sequels and more? Uh, I honestly really hated Terminator Genesis. I gave it 5 out of 10 just because it had some decent parts in it, but I honestly really hated that movie so much. But uh, yeah, I'm I, I'm glad that she says no. Do do some do some good stuff. Do do better stuff. That's what you need. <laughs> But yeah, um, so she's not returning for any of the sequels. So that's my main thing. Like, are they going? Are they going to reboot this franchise again? Because originally the next one was to come out next year, um, May nineteenth, two thousand seventeen. Now that Baywatch is coming out that day, um, so yeah, they were intending a lot. They were intending a lot for this film. And then, like, once it didn't do well Amer in North America, they're like, okay, we're not, we're going to reevaluate. And then, like, and then China, it went a lot. It, it made a lot of money in China. So they're like, oh, maybe we can squeeze in the one out. And then, no, it didn't really do anything. And then, like, now they're saying, like, oh, we're going to uh, review the reception Genesis got, change some stuff. I say leave this. I understand Paramount's type of uh, philosophy here, their strategy here, because in 2019, I think, I believe, 2019, 2018, the rights go back to James Cameron. We don't know what's, what he's going to do with those. We don't know what he's going to do with that, with those rights, at least. We don't know if he's going to, after, well, he's going to be plugged up with, he's going to be, uh, he's making four Avatar movies, so he's going to be too crowded with that. So we don't know if we, whether he's going to be like writing a Terminator film while doing that and then eventually just sell off the idea to a studio to make it. Or whether he's just going to resell them or maybe he just keeps them. You know, we don't know yet. This Terminator, Terminator is an interesting franchise to watch. We'll either see it just completely die out or we'll see it go make another one. Salvation and Genesis, I think, didn't work out because it kind of followed that action just plain on action with while the first two uh terminator films had that like thriller type vibe for it if you see if you understand what i'm getting they had that like thriller vibe um horror vibe to it it had that vibe to it and while the next while the last uh few wild salvation genesis Rise of the Machines had that action vibe to it. It kind of left out that novelty of the first two Terminator films. And I think that's really why the why the last three have gotten horrible reviews. But yeah, um, that's all I gotta say about that. I'm hoping they don't make a new one. Next, next scene we'll be talking about Al Alfonso. I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Guy who did Gravity, Alfonso Curon, I think that's how you say his last name. I'm not exactly 100% sure. Is to help with Jungle Book Origins, the Jungle Book, the, the Jungle Book film directed by Andy Serkis. Uh, I actually really looking forward to this film. I've not seen the, the Disney one yet. Um, I heard a lot of people really love that film. Um, I'm just going to get on who is a part of this. Jungle Book Origins film. Jungle Book Origins. Origins. 
It comes out in 2018 now, October 19th, 2018. You have Andy Serkis as Baloo, Christian Bale as Bakhara. Bak I can't say that word. Back, back, I have not I, I have not seen Jungle Book in like so long. Bakira, Benedict Cumberbatch as Shere Khan, Kate Blanchett as Ka. And you got a whole lot of, I think they got better talent than what the Disney one did. This was supposed to come out later this year, but then Jungle, the Disney Jungle Book um, moved back into 2016. It, it got pushed back. It originally came out in October last year, but it got pushed back to October, the, the April. So then they pushed it back to October 2017 for work on special effects. And then right before Disney Jungle Book, they pushed it back another year. So this film has been filming for... I started last year, March 9, 2015. Um, originally, Alejandro Gonzalez in R2 was supposed to direct. That would have been really great. But yeah, um, Alfonso Curon is supposed to help with uh, stuff. I'm guessing for um, visual effects and possibly story stuff. I really like Gravity. I don't think I like it as much as critics made it out to be. But I think help... Ha him helping out Andy Serkis' first directed film really helps. Really helps the film overall. The next thing I'm going to film, Blade Runner 2 moves up to October 6, 2017. It originally come out Martin Luther King weekend, 2018, but it got pushed up to October. Um, I, I think this film starts filming in a few, like a month or two. Uh, I'm on Grab the Wikipedia page right now. I'm going to get off that. That movie made a lot of money anyway. Uh, Blade Runner uh, 2 is... Let me get on the uh, stuff right now. Blade Runner 2. Uh, Blade Runner. Let me just get on Blade Runner. But yeah, I think this will start filming pretty soon. Uh, we'll begin July of 2016. So yeah, Ryan Gosling is supposed to be in it. Dennis Vill Villeneuve, I think it's pronounced his name, is supposed to direct, which I really love that movie. I really like Prisoners. I, I actually love Prisoners. I think that was my favorite movie of 2013. I didn't really like Sicario as much as other people. I thought that film wasn't as great as I thought. Uh, but Roger Deakins is also doing cinematography for this film. Uh, Dave Bautista is coming in. Robin Wright, Harrison Ford. I think Harrison Ford is returning. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, he is. Um, but yeah, I. It moves up. It was to come out January 2018. It moves up probably because yeah, I think it had some fierce competition that weekend. Let me get on it anyway. Um, for that weekend, I'm forgetting what exactly comes out that weekend. But I think it's some. Oh, Deadpool 2 is rumored to be coming out that weekend. Yeah, Deadpool 2's rumors will be coming out that weekend. But now it's going up against probably Gambit. Which we probably know Gambit's going to be uh, probably moving up a couple weeks. Because Warner Brothers. Probably moving up. For, yeah, Gambit 2 probably moving up for 20th Century Fox. I might move up either. Probably the, the weekend Ninja Go comes out. That's a week before Equalizer and two weeks before Blade Runner 2. So yeah, we'll probably get that. Um, but yeah, I think I like this move because it shows how much confident they're in. And it, it shows they wanted to get away from Deadpool 2 more likely. Uh, William Dafoe is in Justice League. Um, he's expected to play a hero. No conf conf confirmation yet on that. But a lot of people are speculating Martian Manhunter. I would actually really love that move. I really like William Dafoe and Steve Zizou. I really love them in the Spider-Man movies. I love this move. I really I like William Dafoe in movies, of course. Uh, next bit of news. Jurassic World 2 is directed by J.A. Bayonia. Uh, he was originally attached to World War Z. That was supposed to come out. In World War Z 2 that come out next year. We haven't really seen anything left of that. But I've not seen a lot of his films. I know he did a couple of Penny Dreadful films. He did uh, The Orphanage, which uh, I think I saw a trailer for that before. Did it come out uh, here? Um, oh, it was a remake. What? No? Ah, no. Uh, no. Yeah, I think I've seen it. I think I've seen trailers for it. And then we have The Impossible, some foreign film I've not seen. 
Oh, no, it's not a foreign film. It's got Tom Holland in it and Ewan McGregor. I've not seen that film. Maybe I'll check it out now. But he's apparently attached to Jurassic World 2. I really love Jurassic World. I know a lot of people... As, as, a lot of people didn't like it as much as some people did. I really loved it. And I really want to see Jeff Goldblum in it. But I have faith in Bayona. Hopefully he can bring some more... I'm... I felt like Jurassic World, I wanted that more to be grounded than, than in what it was. I'm hoping they have some stuff grounded for this film. Hopefully it's more grounded with Bayona. Uh, and that's been the news we're going to talk about is John M. Shu is coming back for Night See Me 3. I guess the Lions need to have a whole bunch of confidence in this film. I absolutely hated the first one. I absolutely hated the first one. I'm not going to see the third one, unless the second one, unless it gets great reviews. But yeah. There we go, yeah. Uh, he's returning back, and John M. Shu is kind of that style over substance guy. I really like G.I. Joe. That's the only movie I really liked from him. Uh, didn't he do uh, Gem and the Holograms? I'm on him right now. Uh, he's done Step Up 2, Step Up 3, Justin Bieber, Never Say Never, G.I. Joe, Retaliation, Justin Bieber's Believe, Jim and the Holograms, and Now You See Me Too. So yeah, I think it's more of a style or substance type deal for him. So yeah, I'm not really looking forward to Now You See Me. It doesn't look good, and yeah. That's all the news I'm going to be talking about today on the Eric Moss Speaks Out. I can't believe this episode went up to 30 minutes. But yeah, uh, leave in the comments below Will you guys have any thoughts, comments, or anything you want to talk about for of the topics I discussed in this, whether it be the movie trailers, the movie news, or anything. Uh, please follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are probably going to be on the up on the screen, and the links are probably going to be in the description below. Uh, like my Facebook page. Uh, please like and share with friends and family. If you haven't subscribed to me, please do. Uh, now, we hope you guys have a good day, and goodbye.